pleasure to how our student union organized career night for you. I know how many of you stopped by my or Tatiana's office asking, and what we can do with this degree? So I think your friends and colleagues have been a good job by exposing you to different career paths that exist out there. The program was launched in 2006, <coughs> and in the very first intake, it had only eight students. The program was planned for 16 students intake. But very early on, in second and third year, due to the high pressure of applications, we increased the number. Today, we take up to 50 students, and for every spot, there is 12 applications. So it's a very competitive program to be in. So I'm very happy that you are with us. Hi everyone. Uh, again, I'm Keith. Um, I'm currently a master's student at uh, the University of Guelph. I'm currently doing my master's in biophysics. Uh, and uh, they have subsections in biophysics, so I'm in computational biophysics. Um, so I do more on the mathematics side. Of, uh, of the research. Um, and I'm going to briefly talk about a little bit of my experience so far as a grad student and also um, my leadership, my different leadership roles that I've played here at Arts and, and how I brought it over to Guelph. My experience from my thesis in fourth year has helped me build skills for the thesis that I'm working on now. I, I wouldn't be uh, near, near, even half as far as I am into my research right now if I didn't do my thesis here and under the supervision of uh, Dr. Boschner. I tried to make a better community within medical physics. And now I'm sitting on four committees at Guelph and the uh, board of directors for the Graduate Student Association. So I've carried this on even further. I, I do talk about my experience at Ryerson quite often. Uh, I was actually ready to do course union from first year. I was like, let me do something. And they're like, calm down. <laughs> You're only first year. I was like, well, I'm sure you can find something for me to do. And so I started off saying, well, what if I help with your website? And they said, we can allow that. <laughs> It was, it was really, really we can allow it. <laughs> um, and so that's how I got my foot in the door. And the next year I ran for VP by, uh, fundraising and uh, VP outreach, and I got that position. Uh, I like what I do, and today I'm going to share with you how I ended up being a clinical medical physicist. Uh, this is who we are, medical physicists. Uh, we have a big uh, association, organization. It's called COM, Canadian Organization. So if you, whenever you want to obtain more information, please visit this website. Nigel explains what are your options, how can you do a residency, and so on. Uh, but basically, medical physicists are either radiation therapy, imaging, uh, Nuclear medicine or health physicists, right? I always wanted radiation oncology physics, so that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit. What is, you know, what I do in radiation therapy. And this is the whole team. Like, you see, it's not only medical physicists, first oncologists, physics associate with an undergrad diploma, working in the clinic, dosimetrists, therapists, nurses, technicians. So all these guys need to get together to give the best patient care, and everybody has to do his part. What's nice in clinical practice? You get the new toys, you, you can play with robots. This so-called cyber knife is for brain radiation, really tiny uh, tumors, it's equivalent to surgery. So you don't have to open up the patient's school. You can... So I went to the program here at U of T. Um, in occupational um, and environmental health. Um, most people from there came with a background in chemistry and physics, uh, chemistry and biology, and I was, lo and behold, the only person in physics. So having all the headaches of applying for grant money and all the research work, you get to read about all this stuff because you're involved, I'm, I was involved in the commissioning 
of the, uh, the first gap knife that we had at, work, uh, at UHN a couple of years ago. Um, when we got the, the, the pet, which I was really excited when we finally got that because that was, you know, from, for me years years ago. And I said, oh, this is so awesome. So I was involved in the commissioning of a lot of these things. Um, so you get to see firsthand a lot of the new technologies without necessarily being um, as involved in um, the development of them and um, the use of them per se. Uh, and today I'm just going to be talking to you about radiation therapy as a career option. So it's a uh, commonly evolved medical physics, as you might have heard earlier. Uh, and it's kind of a different uh, branch of physics, it's more applied. And we also have quite a bit of patient interaction. As Dr. Mills mentioned, I completed about two years here uh, before being accepted into the Joint University of Toronto Michener program in radiation therapy. Uh, and this program is offered by the Department of Radiation Oncology and it's uh, designed to help train uh, future radiation therapists. Uh, I'm also a research associate in medical physics at the Abed Cancer Center, uh, and my main uh, research goals are focusing on a clinical trial for high-dose prostate cancer. So what are the pros and cons of this job? So the job is very rewarding. Uh, you leave every day and you do feel like you accomplished something. Uh, the patients are absolutely amazing. Some of them have gone through really, really tough times and continue to keep going through challenging uh, life moments. Uh, but you do get to learn a lot of interesting things. Uh, and you commonly look at CT images, you commonly do math and calculations, so it's very interesting from a science perspective. And it's very variable. I mean, no day is almost the same. Every patient reacts differently. Every patient is treated almost completely differently. Plans are never the same. Uh, and there's so many different areas to work in, so it can be a very rewarding job, and it's very variable. I'm trying to make a distinction between these two different fields. There's a medical physics, which is the mostly clinical side, which is what you've been hearing about. It's, it's a very um, strictly regulated field, and it requires a very specialized training. It's also mostly based on radiation therapy, because as you know, cancer is a big one. And so you need a lot of radiation therapy. I was mostly on the medical biophysics side, which is the research side. And that's where I still am. Uh, so this includes uh, cancer research with uh, cells, uh, mice, and basically, yeah, yes. Because ever since I did co-op at Ryerson, I never had a job, I, I never did job printing, pretty much. Everything was through connections, um, through your projects and, you know, being introduced to new people. In terms of salaries, you already have a good indication of those things, and you'll notice that in research, the, the money, it's much less rewarding. So medical physicists, as I was said before, starts at about 100k, maxes out at about 150, and this source, this is from somebody who I know who works with is a medical physicist at the Odette Cancer Center. Uh, once you become a senior, senior physicist, you get a bond to 175k. But a physics associate, which is a person who works under medical physicists, earns around uh, 65k starting. But the problem is when you apply for these positions, you are competing with master students. So it's really, if you only have a bachelor, you really have to have uh, good connections or good personality or I don't know what else uh, to be able to get that. And a research associate, as you can see, 45 to 55K is the starting salary, uh, depending on your experience. Okay, so first of all, I'm a medical student, not, I'm a resident, I'm not a resident yet, that's after medical school, but it's fine. So I, I, I'm originally from Vancouver, and I came to uh, Ryerson Medical Physics, or came to Toronto specifically for the program here, um, mainly because of my interest in both medicine and physics. Um, and uh, when I was here, I, I went through the curriculum uh, as it's planned, and also tried to do a few extra courses, or a few necessary courses, so that I could apply to um, as many medical schools as I wanted to. We, like, there's a lot of careers out there where you can help people, and when people say that that's what they want to do, it's very sort of a very common idea, but patients are in a really scary part of their life, and they're really, they're like very vulnerable, and it's really, it's kind of, it's really a, an honor to be able to, to work with them. Um, and uh, that, that's available in a lot of areas after physics as well as in other areas of healthcare, but it's a huge plus and it's top of the list for me. Um, you're using your knowledge to help others, which is really, it's rewarding as well because it kind of makes you feel like you, your schooling went towards something. 
it's rewarding on a personal and I suppose financial level. Uh, and there's a breadth of opportunities which I already sort of talked about and I'm happy to talk about more. Um, job security as well. Uh, the, the good thing about this field is that sort of once you do end up having a job, you're, it's, you, you're able to sort of keep that job for essentially as long as you want, as long as you're not a terrible doctor. Um, and I already talked about the financial part.